Hello, welcome to the first POP training video. My name is John Gibson and I'm going to introduce the POP Centre of Excellence. Uh, I will start by um, talking about POP itself and during that I will talk about the need for performance profiling. Um, I'll also mention the POP tools which are used and developed by the various POP partners. I'll introduce uh, the POP metrics, which are our way of characterizing a particular parallel code. Um, and then I'll finish by uh, letting you know how you can make use of POP services. So first of all, the uh, POP Center of Excellence. Um, it, as it says, it's a center of excellence in POP performance optimization and productivity, hence uh, POP. Uh, and our remit is the promotion of best practices in parallel programming. So we provide uh, free services to industry and academia throughout the EU uh, in which we will look at uh, parallel codes and we will uh, profile that code and provide feedback in terms of uh, to provide an understanding of the application and the system behavior. Uh, and we'll do this across all application areas, platforms, scales, languages, parallel paradigms, etc. And we also give you uh, suggestions and support on how to refactor the code in the most productive way. So the ultimate uh, outcome of this work um, uh, could be faster code in a lot of cases. Uh, but it might also allow you to run uh, bigger jobs or perhaps run jobs uh, with a greater resolution or allow you to um, implement uh, new functionality. So ultimately it may also lead to better science. Um, POP often leads also to a return on investment and I'll give a couple of examples in a moment. Um, and this work may also provide you with an edge against the competition. So first of all, I mentioned return on investment, which, which always sounds good. Um, so we have a couple of examples here from the two different types of uh, uh, POP service, which I will uh, talk about on the next slide. Uh, but in the first example, um, a proof of concept resulted in a 72% faster time to solution. And um, because these particular uh, users were using Archer, the UK's national academic supercomputer, the improved code uh, gave um, a saving of uh, €15.58 per run, uh, which translated to an annual saving based on typical usage data of about €56,000. Um, in the second example, this time a performance assessment, um, the user um, uh, estimated that the, the time they had to spend cost about €2,000. Um, but the um, a, a improvement in the code um, was about 62% and given the €20,000 uh, annual operating cost, this resulted in an annual saving of €12,400 in compute costs, um, which means a return on investment of 620%, um, which sounds pretty good. So I mentioned a couple of services there provided by the uh, Centre of Excellence. Uh, so our primary service is called a performance assessment in which we identify performance issues in a customer code. Uh, we also make recommendations uh, about how these issues might be addressed and how the performance might be improved. Um, we also have a follow-up service to that called a proof of concept in which uh, we will uh, mock up uh, experiments and perhaps a mini app to show um, to implement those recommendations and show the improvements in performance that they provide. Uh, and this can be up to well, up to six months effort, but three to six months. Okay, so I'm going to uh, backtrack a bit now and talk about the need for performance profiling. 
Um, there are a couple of important uh, uh, reasons uh, here on the slides. Um, so first of all, understanding performance is hard. Um, scientific codes, uh, first of all, are often developed by many people um, over many years with development driven by functionality rather than performance uh, for obvious reasons. But that does mean that uh, performance has to take a back seat a lot of the time and often no one has an overview about uh, of the code itself. No one sees the big picture. Um, the other uh, reason for understanding performance is hard is that nowadays especially HPC machines have very complex architectures, tend to have many nodes of multi-core processes processors with an interconnect and a file system and they're performing vector operations and have several levels of cache and you may have uh, GPUs or, or other accelerators so the picture is quite complicated and you know it's not straightforward for anyone to understand. Um, also the other consideration here is that you need to be selective before spending time optimizing code um, well-known computer scientist Donald Knuth uh, once said that premature optimization is the root of all evil. Um, and if we unpick that a little, then optimizing, optimizing code is often uh, very time-consuming. Um, you also have to bear in mind that optimized code is often more difficult to read and understand, and hence debug and maintain. So you need to be selective here. Uh, but also, if you're optimizing a routine and it only takes 2% of your execution time, then you may do a fantastic job of op optimizing the routine, but it's not going to have much impact on the overall performance. Um, so what we need here is a way to understand the behavior of a code in order to guide the optimization process. And that's what uh, performance profiling gives us. So profiling refers to the monitoring of a code's behavior as it executes. Uh, and the idea is to capture the behavior of application under production conditions. So what I mean by that is a um, real data set uh, and a job running on a, a typical number of processes that you would use to run that job. Um, and what this gives us, it allows us to understand and quantify the efficiency of the resource usage and at the same time identify inefficiencies in the code and where improvements uh, can be made. So these profiling results both guide the code refactoring effort and provide a baseline from which uh, any improvements can then be measured. Okay, all sounds good. Um, and it's these profiling services that the various pop partners provide. Uh, so we're a group of eight um, organizations from industry and academia across Europe. Um, so I, I happen to work for NAG in the UK, but we've also got partners in uh, Spain, Germany, the Czech Republic and France. And together we provide um, excellence in performance tools and tuning and programming models and practices and we have a, a pretty solid research and development background with um, um, many years of experience on various academic and industrial applications. Um, one other thing we bring to the um, table is that uh, a number of profiling tools uh, are developed by these pot partners uh, as listed there. So we have X-Ray, Paravar and Daimimas which are collectively known as the BSC tools, are developed in Barcelona. We have Score P Cube and Scholastica, developed by the German partners. Um, Macau, developed by UVSQ in France. And Pipop, which is a relatively new addition, is currently being developed by NAG. Um, and also further development of these tools is being undertaken as part of POP with a view to improving usability for um, uh, for both us and um, users if you, if you want to use these tools yourself. 
uh, then we'd like to make that as easy as possible. And some of these, the talks in this series, uh, will cover the installation and use of uh, these tools here. Um, the other um, interesting selling point of POP are the POP metrics. Um, and these are used in uh, the performance assessments. Uh, and what these are, are a set of metrics that characterize various aspects of the performance of a parallel code. Um, now th this is going to be discussed in, in some detail in the next uh, talk in this series. So I'm going to hold back from saying too much about it now. Uh, but what I will do, I'll have a, a, a quick look at a, a typical table of numbers we might get from a performance assessment. Uh, and generally 80% uh, is a cutoff, so 80% or above would be uh, good, below would be bad. Uh, or might indicate for, uh, the need for further investigation at least. So I could look at the t this table uh, such as this and know straight away that perhaps um, there's a lot of MPI communication going on this code and it, it might be worth um, further investigation. Uh, but as I say, the, ne the next talk we'll discuss this in uh, great detail. So. Uh, earlier on I mentioned a couple of examples of return on investment but I also want to mention that this, there are uh, many success stories from the POP service um, so if you have a look at that link you can uh, read in more detail about all of these uh, but a quick glance will tell you that a couple of examples have shown 10 times improvement in performance and 3 or 5 times improvement is not unheard of, not that unusual. So, you know, have a, have a look at that in your own time. Um, so if you're interested in a free performance assessment uh, of a code, then you can just sign up directly um, using this request form on our website. But uh, maybe you prefer to discuss a few things first, so just get in touch. Um, Alternatively, if you're part of a service and you have a number of candidate codes on your systems, then we're happy to discuss how we might work together. We're already doing that with a number, with a couple of other services. So, as I said, this is the first in a series of online training videos. Um, so this is the uh, current list. Um, this could well be added to over time. Uh, so I would recommend you uh, look at the metrics, pop metrics video number two on that list next and then maybe pick and use a bit after that according to your own uh, um, interests. Okay, I'm also going to take the opportunity um, to publicize our pop webinars. So this is a bi-monthly webinar series um, covering topics of interest to uh, Profile, uh, profiling, performance assessment and optimization uh, to that community. Uh, but we also cover various interesting aspects of parallel programming in general. Um, so if, if there's something you'd be interested in hearing about then do, do let us know. They tend to be 30 minute presentations uh, with 10 minutes of questions from attendees afterwards. So you'll see a, a list of upcoming webinars at the first link there and the set of recordings and slides are available from the second link. So, right, thank you for your time. I hope uh, you found that interesting. Uh, uh, so, have a look at the uh, web page to find out more and perhaps sign up for the newsletter. Uh, we have an email address there where you can get in touch. And why not follow us on Twitter and YouTube to keep track of our events.